What's going on, friends? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. I don't care if this is your first episode or if this is your, you've been a, a podcast vet since it was the Hamilton Train podcast. Um, if uh, Either way, my name is Jared Hamilton. I'm your host, and I'm grateful as fuck that you're here. Um, it's funny. I already just recorded this entire intro, um, but as soon as I'm like, I'm like, we're like five minutes in or whatever, I like looked and my mic wasn't on. I got a monitor right here and my mic was not on. So we're doing this again. But otherwise, I really hope you're doing well and I appreciate you being here. Now, before we get into today's episode with uh, my buddy Dan, which you guys are going to love, um, I definitely want to have a big, big, big thank you to the sponsors of the show. Sponsor number one is Flex Pro Meals. If you guys are not utilizing them or someone like them, uh, it's it's just making weight loss and your guy your goals harder. Now, I'm not saying that like if you, can, if you don't do this, you're not going to be successful. But I'm saying is I know in my life, uh, convenience is everything. I know like uh, it's one of those things where we see it all the time with clients where either um, life is crazy, you're running from soccer game to soccer game or work, overtime, school, the whole nine yards, where sometimes food and meals aren't the most convenient, especially if you're on a journey to get to your your goals. This is when we end up in either drive throughs waiting in line, having $14 meals, and they're not very conducive for weight loss. And you know, you have, you know, a 1500 calorie meal, like in one sitting, whatever the case is. Or the same thing, but at a gas station. So you're like, oh shit. And then you got to pop into a gas station and figure out, you know, what's the best to get for your goals. Or let's say you just don't even eat because you didn't bring food or whatever the case is. And then your hunger gets super crazy. So you binge that night and setting you back. Like that's the last thing I want for you. And in, in so many cases, someone like Flex or a company like Flex Pro, that's who I like to use and the sponsor of the show. It just is such a no brainer because number one, their food comes straight to your front door every month, however much you end up wanting to get. So it's like the Amazon Prime vibe. But then also it's it's uh, it's more affordable than fast food. You're going to save so much money. It's going to be so much more affordable than fast food. And, and in a lot of cases, and way more affordable than a lot of these other meal delivery services. But then also it's tastes fucking amazing. It's made by a chef. If you just go on their website, flexpromeals.com or hit the link below, you can just search through the menu and you're going to be like, how the fuck do they get this this kind of food in that low of calories with that much protein? And I'm telling you firsthand, like it tastes amazing. People message me and they're like, all right, Jared, real talk. Is it actually that good? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Like, of course I have my favorite meals, but like, yes, it's absolutely amazing. So good. I love it. It's a staple in my day. But then it's also going to help make things easier because you also know where all your numbers are at, how many calories are in that, how many grams of protein, the whole nine yards. And it's one of those things, even if you don't, it's not like you're eating every meal like that. It's just one of those on deck things for keeping uh, your shit together when things get a little bit rough and it's just going to help you in the long run. So if that's your cup of tea, definitely check them out, either flexpromeals.com or hit the link in the description. But excuse me, I want to save you money. So if you go use my code Hamilton trained, it does support your boy, which I appreciate. But then at the same time, uh, it's also going to save you of like 20% at checkout, which makes it even more of a no brainer. So definitely get into that. Number two sponsor is first form. Um, you guys know that supplements are a big thing. Um, they are not everything, but they absolutely play a role in this game of transformation and in making your life better. But the problem is I don't want your money that you're spending on supplements to go to the wrong places or with things that aren't the quality that you need. Like that's the hard thing with supplements. Like I talk about a lot, whereas a lot of supplement companies, like some of the big mainstream ones that are sold in like Walmarts, they are getting law. They are getting sued for inaccurate labels, getting sued for like filler bullshit They're you know, that kind of stuff. Or a lot of these companies aren't actual companies. They're just made in someone's basement. So it, it's one of those things that kind of gets kind of, sticky, but it's not as regulated. So um, this is why for me, first form was a no brainer when it came to uh, us partnering together, because not only if you, you can do all the research in the world and everything is right there from a certainty and credibility level of safety, the whole nine yards um, of it, everything from the CEO to the, how they run their, but the business, the core values, the whole nine yards. So it's just, for me, it was a no brainer to work with them. Um, it's what I take. It's what we recommend to clients, the whole, the whole thing. So if you aren't sure where to start with supplements, and you're just like, I don't know if I even need them. Um, I have in the description of the of the podcast, my supplement YouTube video, where I break down like what I take, what we suggest for most clients, what to avoid, what to lean into, that kind of thing. But if you end up wanting to go actually like invest in, in really good quality supplements, like a protein powder, pre-workout or whatever the case is, I highly suggest First Form. And if you go click the link below, I can pull a good old Amazon Prime, so to speak, and save you some shipping because um, that's all, you know, Amazon has us all 
all spoiled, but definitely check that out um, at the link below. And if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, let's get into the goods of today's episode. Today, I interviewed a good friend of mine, Dan James, and he is a, uh, a friend of mine I've gotten to know over Instagram. He's, he's such a good dude. Um, he's from the UK, so uh, hop, skip, and a jump from me. But uh, Dan is such a good human. He's such a good coach. And the reason I wanted to get him on and just talk about this stuff was because of him and I are in a very similar wavelength when it comes to the headspace, the mindset, and the, the, the inner game side of transformation. And it's funny because not a lot of other coaches talk about this stuff, right? Because it's, it's one of my biggest pet peeves is like you'll hear coaches is, you know, talk about fixing your mindset or getting your head right, but it's so vague and it's almost airy fairy and it's not tactical. And it's almost like a buzzword anymore. Like, I don't know very many people and coaches who are like, all right, let's fix your mindset. And they don't even know what that means. Or it's just like, it's, it's just kind of woo woo or whatever the case is. So Dan though is, um, is not one of those. We have a lot of the, I believe a lot of the same things and are on the same wavelength with, with this stuff. So I wanted to get him on and talk about his perspective and where he approaches people with and some of the mindset and inner game strategies on how to make this game easier and simpler for you and ultimately get you better results, not just in your weight loss, but if you do this right, it's going to make your relationship better, your work better, your life better, like your happiness better. So that's what we got into on today's episode. So I'll shut up now and we'll go straight to the interview with myself and Dan. Um, if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to the episode or to the, to the podcast. Um, we're everywhere. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, the, the whole nine yards, but also we are recording and putting all episodes on YouTube. So so if you would rather watch uh, uh, like this, like Dan and I actually go back and forth on this interview and want to watch it, then that video is up on YouTube as well. But otherwise, I'll shut up now. I'll get Dan. I'll talk to you in just a second. What's up, man? How are you? How, are, how have things been? I know it's been a minute since you and I have really talked. So Honestly, mate, really, really good. Like business is going very, very well. I've had a lot of strange things happen, but it's like it's naturally happened. That makes sense. It's like a good thing that's kind of gone on. So yeah. Are we, are we live now, by the way? We just... Yeah, 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 we, yeah. We're recording. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, sorry you're, no, you're good. Well, and like that, that's, I usually start all my episodes recording because I think people like listening to just the bullshit banter back and forth. <laughs> so, uh, and then something usually cool comes of that. But, um, but yeah. So, what, so, it's cause you're, cause you're over in the UK, right? Like you're across the pond. So, um, yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't remember how I first originally came across you. I was thinking about this the other day because I don't remember I came, either, <laughs> mate. I, I think I was stalking you randomly, like I was like, "This guy's really, really cool." And I, was like, I loved your content. Like, this guy's hilarious. He's on the same level as me. And I remember watching that Arte Syndicate thing. Yeah, and then I remember you asking the Q and A, and I was just like, "This is a sign. I, I need to reach that. out to this guy." Oh, I mate, love that. Weird. Yeah, it was so cool. But I said, "All oh, your content is just amazing." So ever since then, then reaching out with you, uh, I said, "I'm always just following your stuff." I'm just like, I just love how you deliver your. And it's just very much like how I deliver my content as well. And like I said, when I had you on my podcast all of, over, over a year and a half ago, you're my first guest. Um, ever since then, I was just like, everything about you just resonates with me. I appreciate and that. And that for me is the best thing. And sure. I feel like you've moved very weirdly into the same trajectory that I have, not yeah. through like copying each other, but it's like the mindset stuff. And mm -hmm. it's only recently that I think that's got a bit of a, uh, a spike in this sort of um this space most people don't normally talk about it but you clearly get it because you can tell people to get it and you can tell people that don't get it and you get it and i'm like <laughs> man this content's so good i love it well and that's what that's why i wanted to have you on the show is because like because you get it right because um what's funny since it's funny you bring up arate i'm actually going to uh that same event this weekend like there's mm. a, another one of those live events with frisella and Milet and the whole arate squad so i'll be actually back with that group of people this coming weekend uh in tennessee so um i saw that i saw that get posted as well like and i was just like oh I'm, I'm i'm really busy this weekend so i'm actually going to the uh going to barbados next week okay so this week this weekend is me just getting ready and i saw it and i was like because the time difference yeah for I was sure like, oh man i can't make it because they're doing that live recording again so i'm frustrated about that yeah no i get that i get that you know it's interesting so like i want to get into some of the like really kind of piggyback off what we were talking about with the, the the mindset stuff where like most people go wrong with it but before we get into that i'd love it if you would just talk a little bit about like who you are your story uh, for those that aren't very familiar with you and your work yeah so um i'll, I'll, I'll go way back to the beginning i <laughs> i kind of fell into the fitness industry so i actually went to university in america mm. i was on a soccer scholarship very very what good at soccer uh, i was in iowa so okay. my university is actually closed down now it's called ashford university and essentially okay. it's like a small independent iowa university and then kind of what happened was this massive corporate company from uh, California came and took over it 
And basically kind of what they did was they stripped of all its assets and then they basically closed down. So quite sad, but it was very specific to sports. So it was just a sporting university. Um, so our, our university soccer team was very, very good. It was NAIA. And we were nationally ranked in the top five uh, by the time I'd left. So again, good team. I then kind of fell into fitness industry because before I left to go to America, I kind of got my personal training qualification, but I only did it to carry on playing soccer at college. So I wasn't really bothered about the fitness industry, didn't really care. I came back, wasn't mentally okay, but didn't realize I wasn't mentally okay. I was basically sat there playing computer games and my mum was like, you need to get a job. You're a bum. And I was just like, <laughs> right, okay. I was like, so I was like, right. So what was like, well, what do I like? I was like, well, I enjoy going to the gym. I've got this qualification. So I kind of just fell into it. So I ended up working at this big commercial gym in the UK as a, as a fitness coach. And then, then what ended up happening was I was going above and beyond for these people. People would come in, they'd get a free program with me. And then basically every three or four months, I could come back and get a program rewritten. And basically the personal training manager came to me one day and said, basically, you've got to come and be a personal trainer here or we're going to get rid of you because people aren't having personal training because they're just coming to you for these plans, <laughs> just waiting. So I was just like, right, okay. So then they're like, right. So they gave me this, literally, they gave me this uniform, said, right, as of next week, you personal training. I remember the first personal training session I did. I, mate, I literally felt like I'd just stolen this woman's money. I had no idea what I was doing. No. <laughs> and it, it felt so uncomfortable. I was like, right, I can't feel like this again because I felt so, so uncomfortable that I literally spent in that first six months over £5,000 studying. Wow. And then I got hooked on studying. So I was like, this is great. And then from there, I very quickly present, uh, uh, progressed from six months of doing personal training to then working at the top personal training company in the UK. So that's when I then really honed my skills and basically learned how to get transformations with people. And then doing through that process, I then ended up competing and began a modeling contract. So I was six pack shredded, living quote unquote my best life. But very, very quickly, my life kind of fell apart. Uh, I left the gym I was at. I uh, started off doing, going off by myself and doing my own thing. And I then became massively depressed. And I basically hit rock bottom. I'd got this amazing business with amazing transformations. I'd worked to this top place and I'd lost everything. But on paper, my life was amazing. Six pack shredded, model on magazines, um, had all these women around me, but I was absolutely miserable. And it was a very, I'm not sure about your own journey, if you've ever been there or any listeners have been there, mm -hmm. but when I look back at it now, it was very, very dark. I didn't realize sure. how bad it was until I really looked back. And then I kept telling myself, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. I did some miracle. I managed to pull myself out of it. Don't know to this day how I did it. But then I realized I need to swallow my ego here and get another job. So I started working in a bar, surrounding myself with people again, and slowly got back on my feet. I then figured I don't want to ever be out of control of my mind again. I didn't like the fact I was out of control. So I just threw myself into this like, self-development space. And I ended up getting like a Tony Robbins, basically my girlfriend at the time. I had like my last $200 in my account, or pounds in my account. <laughs> and I bought a Tony Robbins audio thing. Yes, yeah. And literally it cost 250. So I went 50 pounds into debt. So bearing in mind, during this time being, in, um, being depressed, I'd accumulated a lot of debt. So I'd lost my flat. I'd lost my business. I was in a lot of debt. And I was just like, I need to do something. Andy Frisella keeps talking about Tony Robbins. Right, I'm going to listen to this thing. <laughs> so I did. So I literally just paid this 250 pounds, borrowed 50 dollars or pounds off my, my, my missus and just went all in. And it was a, uh, I can't remember what the course was, but that was it. It opened my eyes to everything. I then started to listen to Andy Frisella a bit more. I remember him talking about this book, Law of Attraction. So I bought that and I literally was like a sponge. And then from there, my trajectory went sky high. I managed to build everything back I'd lost. Uh, and then I realized, wow, I can apply this to my clients. And that's basically what I've done. I've, I've then now gone even deeper into this mindset stuff because I realized that what I thought I knew about myself, mm -hmm. I don't know anything. Right. I, I really realized that I don't know a lot. So now I've really deep dived, just spent five figures on this other like mentorship thing I'm doing now to really deep dive myself. And the deeper I get into it, the more I realize that's the missing piece that people don't have when it comes to their goals. And that's why I'm, I'm basically, I, I would say I'm obsessed with it because I am. I love that. Dude, that's so cool. I love that story. I love that, that, the, the whole thing about like, like I, I love a good, like story of overcoming, you know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. we all, it's, it's funny. We all like to look at those stories with other people, but we, but a lot of us don't like to be that own story. Right. Or like we see, like I talk with clients about this a lot where it's like, we all love that story of, you know, rags to riches or uh, I was broken and now I overcame and all of that. But 
but how many, how many times do we see a client they're struggling they're they're at their rock bottom and they think that's it it's like you know you could be that story right now if you get your shit together if you get your headspace right if you get your actions in check and you start just executing you can be that that story you know what i mean that's the thing there but no one gives them for me this this is the most frustrating thing for, for myself that i found as well the information's out there yeah but you've got to really search for it the the, mm. the, the world that we live in perpetuates mediocrity Oh, 100%. It perpetuates people being fat, overweight, because it's easy. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing when you really look at it. So for me, it, it, when I talk to my clients, I just say to them, it's, it's not your fault because you don't know any better. However, once you hear this information from myself, from my podcast guests, it's like you then can't use ignorance as an excuse because before you didn't know you have a choice, but now you have a choice. What are you going to do with that choice? And then the whole thing that, again, that you will do and that I do is we empower the client because at the end of the day, they are the superhero in their story. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about them. We are just the guide. I say they're Luke Skywalker and I'm Yoda. <laughs> yes. I'm just here to guide you. Like, <laughs> I, like, like, I, I'm not here to be the hero. It's not about me. Right. It's about you. But you've got to meet me halfway. Yeah. I can only give you 50% of this information. You have to give me at least 50% back because I can't reach in and do it for you. You have to want it. And I find that you probably find this as well. It, at the start, it's giving the client the belief because they don't have the belief in themselves. So we've got to have that belief for them until they start to believe in themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. With without a doubt, I don't. I don't think I could have said that any better. It's it, it, we, it, it's two sided. But like, just because some like the way I like to word it is, just because something may not be someone's fault, but it's now their responsibility, right? Like, like I'm like we've all we all have stories of shit that happened in our childhood, or you know, ignorant us just being blatantly ignorant about something. But just because something wasn't like my fault, that doesn't mean it's not my responsibility, right? So. And so we talk with clients about like, it's not your fault you struggle with this. It's not your fault because you didn't know any better, but guess what? You know now. <laughs> so now it's your responsibility. It's, it, it goes back to, to just taking radical ownership, even in that situation, even if something isn't your fault, even if it's stuff mom taught you when you were six or um, life happened to you or whatever, it, it may not be your fault, but it's, your, it's still your fucking life, right? So now it is your responsibility. The, the thing for me with that is, like I said, the radical responsibility. That's the thing. It's a case of, yes, this thing may have happened to you. It wasn't your fault, blah, blah. And yes, you used food as a protection mechanism. Okay, cool. So now we've identified that. We've unpicked that. We now know the cause of it. What are you going to do? You're going to carry on playing the victim. Because at the minute, what you're doing is you're giving your power and your energy away to this thing. Always saying, ah, it's this thing. I'm this because of that. That's so disempowering. And what you're doing is you're allowing your outside circumstances to determine your life. But actually, when you realize, right, this thing's happened, what part did I play in this? Even if it's so small and minute, take back that bit of responsibility because that one bit of responsibility gives you your power back over that person, that thing or that situation. You can then use that to do something. Because like I said, that, that cliche thing, your past doesn't equal your future. It's genuinely the truth. Yes, this thing happened. But how long are you going to keep beating on that drum until you realize this isn't helping me with my life? And then you let it go. You forgive the person. You forgive yourself. Again, you're not saying that it's okay. You don't make it okay. You're not saying, oh, I forgive you for this thing. You're forgiving for you. It's not about them. It's about you, for your peace. Forgive for you and then let go. I even get clients to write breakup letters with themselves. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Like the old you, just let go. Like Because again, especially if someone's morbidly obese, and normally, again, massive, massive stereotyping here, but normally to get that big, it's a defense mechanism for something. Sure. Uh, normally. And people hate themselves because of that. I hate how I look. I've done this to myself. But when you understand you've done that for a defense mechanism, and that's probably kept you alive, you can then be like, well, actually, wow, that's actually really cool. You can come from a place of love and compassion then, Wow, I've created this to survive this thing or this environment from when I was younger. Okay, that's amazing. But it's now no longer serving you. So break up with yourself from a place of love and compassion yeah. rather than you fat, disgusting slob, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Thank you so much for being there when I needed you. You have saved me. You've been there through so much stuff for me. However, I now no longer need you. I need to do this by myself. Thank you. And just let it all out. And it can be really, really emotional. It can be really, really hard because you're having a really raw, honest conversation with yourself, which most people don't like to do. But you're then taking ownership and then you burn it. And then you write the next script of your life and you keep going. Like, who do you actually then want to become? 
And you're not losing the weight. You're not losing the fat. You're releasing it because you've held onto it for so long. Just release it. Just let it go. That's so good, man. That that reminds me of a lot of one of the things that we we have clients do a lot who are really struggling with this is um, that's inner child 101, right? Psychology yes. teaches us that like we all have an inner child. And it, the way that I like to view it is we don't wear the same clothes we wore when we were six, but we're walking around with the same identity from when we were six or the same beliefs than when we were six. But, but too often people don't realize that like in a really fucked up sense, whatever you're struggling with served you. It's all you knew, right? Like when uh, we were, we had a client uh, one time that she, um, her binge eating came from uh, mom and dad didn't take care of her very well. So when she went to the neighbor's house across the street, they, they knew it, they got it. So they're like, Hey, so-and-so just eat whatever you want. And so she learned to binge every day. She would go over to, to little Sarah's house because she didn't have food at home. And she's now an adult uh, struggling with binge eating. I'm like, you have to understand like that, that little girl of you saved you with that. So you need to quit treating yourself like an asshole for binge eating. And you need to write a letter to six-year-old you thanking her for saving you, but also saying, Hey, I'm a big girl now. I appreciate what you did when we were little, but we don't have to do that right now. But thank you though. And guess what? So-and-so doesn't struggle with binge eating anymore because like we, I always say, if we don't go in and do the inner work, the, uh, I'm sorry, if we don't go in and do the inner work, the outer work just doesn't work. Right. That's why like, I've re like, I don't know if you've noticed or not. I've rebranded the entire podcast to what I call dieting from the inside out. Cause of the same kind of concept. It's one of the first things like when in our coaching program, our very first stage before we let people go into like weight loss and things like that, we go right into what I call dieting from the inside out because no weight loss stuff matters if this isn't taken care of. You know what I mean? Which is why so, so that's, that, that's exactly what I did. But I kind of do it along with, so I don't do it before, but I'm just like, right. You've come to me for a reason. Cool. Right. Well, let's just let's just set you off on the normal stuff, the nutrition training program. But just so you know, when you're working with me, we're doing this stuff as well. So it's like you're doing it very blatantly. Obviously, you've changed your name so people know what they're getting. I'm a bit like, oh yeah, I'll give you what you want, but also here's a massive undertone of what you need. It's kind of like a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, and the big reason why we did that was uh, so many people like they hire a coach because they're invested financially. They um. They, uh, they're invested financially. They got, they, they, as soon as they hire a coach, they're like, all right, I'm going to do this for, you know, six months, 12 months, the time clock starts. And they're like, oh, I've got to do this as fast as possible. I'm like, yo, no, no, that's not how we're doing this. Like, we got to take a step back, get your inner game, get your relationship with you fixed. Like, yeah, we're going to get this fitness shit together along the way. But like, I don't want you even worrying about dieting right now because your food relationships, your sabotage, your self-deprecating behavior is going to ruin everything. So, so I'm curious for you. Where do you normally start with this with people? Because, and this is why I wanted to talk about it is because um, you and I are on the same wavelength with all this stuff, right? And I love the fact that you're bringing in, because we do the same thing, bringing in like all of these other areas, like all the books, all of the the personal development into the fitness space, right? It's it's no no one does it or no one does it right, I should say. But agreed. the concept of like, everyone's like, just fix your mindset or um, get your, your head game in check. It's so vague and it's so... Uh, clickbaity. And I think people are like, yeah, get my mindset right. And it's like, what the fuck does that even mean? It's like when someone says eat, just eat better. And it's like, what's that even mean? So like, so for you, do you see, I know everyone's different, but any specific ways to go about when you start to fix someone's inner game and headspace and mindset, because it's such a vague kind of clickbaity subject when it comes to practicality and tactically, tactically speaking, where do you normally like to start most people at, or where do you see people go South the most? So for me, I like to start them out very, very basic. So like I said, when it comes to like the dieting phase, I am not a big believer in pushing someone hard. Again, I make it very clear to someone, you've kind of got to stay with me for at least a certain amount of time. And then during the process, I'll basically educate them on these things. And so basically just really basic, simple stuff like getting your steps in. Again, most people say, everyone knows you've got to get the 10,000 steps. Cool. But if most people are coming to you and are doing 3,000 steps, why go for 10? Right. So I'll start them off at like 5,000 steps. So, so basic, that. simple, but again, you're getting outside. And when you're walking, you're doing it for your mindset. So you've got to either listen to an audio book or a podcast. So you're doing something. And then get them to read and get them to journal. So straight off the bat, there are three things all my clients have to do. They've got to read a nonfiction book, they've got to walk, and they've got to journal. Now, with the journaling, I just started off. I think you did a video on this the other day, which literally I was like, wow, because I think you did a video on how you start journaling. Uh, and I started off today I'm feeling. And you basically said something very, very similar. Yeah. And you basically just, you free write. <laughs> yeah. So basically what you're doing with that is, and people don't quite understand this, what you're doing is by 
by free writing, the, the, the rule is you basically set yourself a timer, 5, 10, 15 minutes. You, yep. you set the timer and you're not allowed to let the pen stop moving because what's happening is you're turning off your conscious ability to think because you can't think that quickly. So then your subconscious is going to talk to you. After you finish, you've then got what your subconscious is really thinking. And then from there, it's then getting the clients to sit and sort of deal with that. Now, along the, the process, my clients get educational videos where I basically just talk to them about the basic stuff. For example, I call something called the sausage machine. It's been really, really simple and funny, and it makes everyone laugh. I teach this. When I, when I, so I talk this. I talk about this stuff in schools as well. So I go into schools now, and I public speak on mindset and mental health, and this is a principle that I always use. So I call it the sausage machine. The principle is very, very basic. What you put in is what you get out. So you put beef in, turn the handle, get beef sausages, pork, da da da, whatever it is. Very, very simple. What do most people put in? It's fear, regret, worry, hatred, anger, social media, and they wonder why they've got this shit sausage. <laughs> which again is their life I love that so, but, so much but, but it's what it is <laughs> yeah, so, so again so I say to them, you, you, you can call it a life machine a manifestation machine it's basically how the brain works so I get them to, from the very very start to just become aware what are you putting into your sausage machine on a daily basis because fundamentally what people do is they wait they wait for this perfect sausage I'm like your life isn't just going to turn perfect you have to put the right ingredients in so how about we start doing some things like gratitude love compassion success vision all of these things and then we go from there and that's kind of how I work it I then educate them on the nutrition I educate them on the training because for me fundamentally as you know in the fitness space people like to push the thing keto intermittent fasting whatever it is and do these things work Yes, but they work because of principles. And people don't teach principles, they teach the thing. So I teach my clients the principles. Got to be in a calorie deficit. That's it. Like scientifically, you have to, however you get there is up to you. If you want to be ketogenic and be boring for the rest of your life, never have carbs, <laughs> knock yourself out. Like, who am I to say that? But at the end of the day, boring, cool. Teach them the basics. You teach them the basics of training. And basically, what you're doing is you're empowering the client. So when they're going through the journey and they're sat there and they're eating this healthy food and their partner or their friend says, well, why are you eating that? They're not there like, oh, um, um, because Dan says so. And they're like, well, that's <laughs> fucking shit and boring. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them pizza. If they can be like, well, actually, uh, I've got some protein here because you know what protein is? It's the Greek word for primary. So actually, it's the most important macronutrient. Do you know what macronutrients are? Well, macronutrients, there's three of them. But And they start to educate. Then their friends then like, oh, wow. Uh, Cool, tell me a bit more. So what you're doing is you're empowering the client to know why they're doing what they're doing. And that's the key thing. Now, then from here, what happens is you slowly progress. And then we start to work on the belief systems and what I call the habit loop. Because fundamentally, we're just creatures of habit. We're just stuck in thought patterns. And normally, it's negative thought patterns. And as you've sort of alluded to, when people start, they're buzzing. They're like, right, let's get at it. So I don't normally come across any problems for the first three to four weeks which then means we can get some good results to start off with. And then when they hit the first problem, it's like, right, let's now talk about this. And then we break it down. That's the thing for me. I've got a formula. Pain plus reflection equals progress. So when they go through the pain, we reflect together. And that's how we then make the progress. And then we go on. So the way that I sort of do it is as they come up at each sort of thing, I then educate them, teach them. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. It's basically about belief systems. It's fundamentally about belief systems. It's about their identity, how they see themselves. Because if you identify as someone, I am fat, I am no good, I'm never going to lose weight, guess what? You never are going to lose weight because you see yourself as a fat person. And what's going to happen is you'll lose the 20, 30 pounds, but your identity is still, I am fat. Your self-image is, I am fat. And you'll snap straight back there. So you have to change the identity. It's like a thermostat in a room. I know that Ed Mallet talks yeah, about this dude, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, Bob Proctor talks about it as well. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like if your thermostat's set at 40 and you go down to 30, so you lose the 10 pounds, you're going to find a way to gain it back again. So you have to change your thermostat. You have to change how you see yourself. And that's what people don't fundamentally do, which is what you're saying there. Coaches talk about mindset. They have no idea what mindset even is. They think it's just a buzzword. Yeah, it's 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 mind boggling because like that's the thing people don't understand from like the identity. <clears throat> excuse me, because our identity, I love it's the best analogy ever that Milet uses. Is it's like a thermostat. Its its sole role is to regulate the environment to where the setting is at, right? But to I heard a, an amazing um, an amazing analogy. I can't remember who said it. It may have been my lead again, but it was identities and weight loss is, is most people struggling. Their identity is I'm a fat person who got lucky and lost 20 pounds versus being overweight and, and with the identity of I'm my most optimal self or I'm my most, my high potential self in the healthiest version of me, the whole nine yards. And I'm just going through a rough time. 
right? There's a difference. It's like from like, let's say a financial, let's say, let's say someone has the, the goal of like being really wealthy instead of it being like, well, I'm broke and I got lucky in business. Then you're going to find a way to go through a slump in business. It's, it's, oh no, I'm, I have the identity of this version, a millionaire, a super successful business owner. I'm just going through a rough time, right? It's, it's where your anchor is set at because the, the best way I've heard it, uh, I've had him on my podcast a couple of times. His name's Nick Ross. Nick talks about, um, the identity doesn't go down without a fight because it, it just, it fights back super hard because of what kind of what we talked about earlier that it serves us at some point. So it's, there's like this protective mechanism within it. Well, so even that, it's like, if you've been thinking a certain way for 20, 30, 40 years of your life, what, what makes you think that you can change it in six months? It just doesn't make any sense. You, you've got to think of it like a grooves on an old like CD player or CD thing. Like the, the grooves are so deep. Like as soon as you put it onto another thing, it's going to skip back to its old thing. And there's a key thing as well that I use with this. You sort of said that about the fat loss. A lot of the, the, the people are overweight and got a lot of fat to lose. Their identity is I am fat. And I just try and reframe that for them. No, no, no. You have fat. You are not fat. Like you also have thumbnails. <laughs> you're not a thumb, you're, you're not a thumbnail. Yeah. So it's like what are you ident- what are you identifying as? Like yeah. you, you have fat. You are not fat. Because then what happens is if you identify as I am fat, when you start to lose that identity and you start to drop the fat, you then lose who you are. But it's like, no, no, no. You are you are Jared. You are Jared. You have a body. For me, my whole thing with this is like you're a spiritual being with an intellect, with a physical body. Bob Proctor so are, 101 right there, man. <laughs> there we go. So, 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 so I'm, I'm, doing all, I'm doing all this sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm learning with his top mentor. I don't know if you've seen the little thing I've got in the background here, but I'm learning with one of his top uh, students right now. Really? About spiritual yeah. Oh, I love so, that. Yeah, I so that's that. a bit, but it, it, it connects everything together that I've learned. And that's it. It's so simple and basic. But fundamentally, that's just, so we have this body. But I am fat. No, no, no. You are so much more than that. Like you are Jared. You are hilarious. Like you're very, very funny. Again, I don't know you personally, but from Instagram, you're hilarious. <laughs> you're clearly very intellectual. You've got all these other things. Sure. Like your body does not define you as a person. Yeah. But fundamentally, if you're the funny fat friend, who are you without being funny? Mm. So who are you without being fat? Or are you just funny? But maybe people won't find me funny if I'm not fat. It's like you're, you're putting your whole identity and self-worth into just how your physical body looks rather than seeing all these amazing other qualities that you actually have and people admiring you. Well, it's, it's well, I, one thing I say a lot is if, is if your identity is made up of things that you don't like about yourself that you're trying to change, that's a fucking hellacious uphill battle. You'll probably never win. Like we talk about this a lot with like binge eating and emotional eating and things like that, because people don't say <clears throat> that they're, they, they, they struggle with binge eating. They say, I'm a binger. I'm an emotional yes. eater, but that gets really scary because just because you did something doesn't mean that's who you are, right? You, no one came out of the womb being a binge eater, right? But we'll talk with clients and I'm like, they'll say, oh, I'm a binger. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on a second. Like binger is a noun. Binge eight or binge eating is a verb. It's just something that you did. You got to be careful when you start putting nouns with things, person, place, or thing. It's who you are. If I'm Jared, the, the binger, or I'm, you know, things like that, or Jared, the emotional eater, what's going to happen when I go two weeks without doing that? I'm going to find a way it's going to trigger. It's like clockwork to do it again and get back to my identity. But when you're like, no, 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 I'm this and decide who you want to be, then all of a sudden we can address the activity that's not so great and get and heal that over time. But we have to get solidified who you actually are and then act in congruence with that. It's but but the problem is most people's identity they keep because somehow they got here. They didn't on purpose put it there and say, This is who I want to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's the thing, you've then got to because if you're trying to destroy these paradigms, these things, these these behaviors, these habits, you, you're trying to get rid of them. Once you get rid of them, you have to replace them with something else. And that's what a lot of people don't tend to do. They're like, oh, I'm going to stop doing this thing. Okay, so you stop doing that thing. And if you then don't consciously put something in its place that's going to be in line with who you want to be, that's, again, the problem. And this is also part of this as well. It's doing the work of who do you want to be? Like, yes, you want to drop this body fat. Cool. But in the process, who do you actually want to be? Because this is fundamental. I don't know if you find this with your clients, but my clients get normally about three months in. And they're like, this stuff you're teaching me, it's, um, it's not really just about fat loss, is it? I'm like, no. And they're like, no. I've applied it with my partner, I've applied it with my job. I've, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's the same principles. Like yeah, I'm teaching you life easily. principles. I'm just using it for fat loss. And when the penny drops, people's entire life changes. But it's like, so who do you want to become? And then what you do is you then reverse engineer it. The problem is people are looking at their goal from where they are now, from what they've got, their physical senses, what they can see. They're looking at their body and like, well, I'm fat and I want this thing here. You have to become the person that you want to be. Be the person you want to be. 
Do the things that they would do, and you will have what you want to have. B times do equals have. Like, what do you want to have? It's not like I said. If I want to be a millionaire, I'm not a millionaire right now, but I will look at millionaire. What do they do? What kind of person are they? How do they dress? I've got to be that kind of person, do those kind of things, and then I will have the outcome. It's cause and effect. But people don't realize that they, they want this effect. You've got to do the cause. You have to change the cause. You can't just be like, oh, I want this effect. Okay, cool. Well, what are you going to do about that? Like, have you actually addressed that? Have you actually thought about that? Who do you want to become in the process? Because this is a whole thing now where you get to define who you are. And no one's probably ever asked these people since they were kids, like, who do you want to be? Because we'd get asked that as a kid, don't we? Or oh, what do you want to be when you're older? Okay, well, what do you want to be in a year's time when you've dropped 50 pounds? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? What kind of clothes do you want to be wearing? What kind of car do you want to have? Do you, help, do you want to earn more income? Like, what kind of partner do you want to have? Because again, some of these people don't have partners and and then asking themselves, like, well, what kind of partner do you want to have? Because if you don't know about it, then what's going to happen is the universe is just going to put someone on your lap yeah. and it might not be who, the person that you want. Yeah, 100%. But ask, ask the questions. Yeah. It's, it's bro. It's, it's, it's funny. I, and I love this. I could talk about this stuff for hours. It's, it's too, when, when, when you said, when you said that, I don't know if your clients fa- like this happens with with your clients about that three month mark. And <clears throat> I've always said this is if you change, if, if the only thing, if you go through this journey, the, the right way, your whole life changes, right? You, if, because you're, you're changing the foundational standpoints of who you are, your character, your beliefs, your identity, your standards, your entire everything. So yeah, you don't just lose weight. You all of a sudden, everything else gets better. Um, I've always said, if, if you, ju- if you go on this journey and you only lose weight and that's the only thing that changes, you fucked something up along the way, because the, the way that I view it, like, you know, like Bob Proctor talks a lot about like, um, where your, where your energy's at and the, the frequency you're on, like, a almost like radio waves, right. Is I see so many people, they stay down here and they go, I want to get that. So they're like, how do I stay? Like they're looking at, like you said, from their shitty version of themselves, their shitty identity, their bad self-image, all this stuff. They're like, well, how do I get my thing is who do I have to become that gets it's a whole exactly. different, it's, it's an entirely different point of it's point reverse of view. engineering it yeah. it's reverse engineering it like I, what, what do i want cool but right, i look at it as if i've got that right what do i have to do to get that like and people can't seem to fathom that it's like you have to reverse engineer it you can't just look at it and but again this is also the thing it should be almost effortless but people try and force it on oh, i've got to do this i've got to work harder and yes you've got to work hard not for a single second saying you don't have to work hard during this because it is hard but it shouldn't be forced. It should be effortless. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and, and again, it goes back to like, if you're trying to stay, the sh- if you're trying to stay you down here and you're just trying to get this new you result, but you're acting in congruence with the old you, right? Versus if you think about like, let's say, let's say like the co- concept of how, not how do I get it's who do I have to become that gets the, that the gets part is a byproduct. It's not the goal. Right. So like, for example, let's say this wasn't weight loss. What if it was, I want to have a great marriage. My marriage is fantastic, but let's say it wasn't. And I go, I want to have a fantastic marriage. Um, I don't think, how do I be a selfish, non-communicative piece of shit and get a a good marriage? (laughs) I go, well, having a good marriage is a byproduct of something. So who do I have to become who has a great marriage? Well, that means I have to become someone who communicates. I have to become someone who puts my partner first. I have to become someone who's not codependent. I have to become someone who prioritizes his marriage, right? If we say, how do I keep my shitty habits <clears throat> in my shitty situation and just get this result? We don't get something for nothing, right? So when people in weight loss, as surface level as that sounds, everyone goes, well, how do I lose 30 pounds in 30 days? Well, how do I get the outcome? But it's, it's not that. It's who do I have to become who gets these results? You see, it's, it's crazy. But this thing, this thing that baffles me with this, why does no one talk about it? Because it's, when we talk about it, and when I explain this to my clients, it makes perfect sense. So it's not like you explain it to them. They look at you gone out thinking, what the hell are you on about? Like, it makes perfect sense when you think about it. You can't stay the same doing the same things that you were doing that got you in that situation in the first place. You can't be be in the same environment. You can't do all this. You can't do that and then become a different person. It doesn't work that way. And it makes complete sense. You can't act like someone that's absolutely broke. Like me, when I I lost all my, my money and I got myself into debt, I can't act like that and expect to have abundance in my life financially. It just does not work. I have to change my habits. I have to change my routines, my behaviors. I have to become a person that actually understands money. And that's again, that's also part of it, understanding money. So again, with fat loss, you have to understand fat loss. So again, something I talk to my clients about is how the body actually burns fat because people don't actually know how the body burns fat. They think they just get some calorie deficit and it just magically drops off. The way that I use it is if you've been 
fat and overweight for 30 years of your life, the factory of your body that burns body fat has been absolutely derelict. It's been redundant. The machines are all rusty. They're all cobwebby. What makes you think that you can just go in there and in one day of like, right, we're going to open this factory back up again. It's going to start burning body fat again. You've got to go in there. You've got to dust off all the machines again. You've got to bring all the nutrients in, all the things to clean down the machines, get all the raw material in. And then over time, the factory is going to start. And at the start, it's going to be really clunky. It's going to be really crappy then over time, it's going to actually start to work. And as you said, the amazing thing you said on my podcast all those months ago was there's a gestation period. Like for pregnancy, it's nine months. Like you know it takes nine months, so you understand the process. When it comes to fat loss, it's the same sort of thing. What makes you think you can be in a calorie deficit for a week and drop 50 pounds? It makes no sense. Like you haven't you haven't been in a fat-burning state for years your body's going to be like, what the hell are you doing to me right now? And it's going to resist it. It's going to be clunky. But you've got to give the body what it needs. Again, cause and effect. Give the body what it needs. Do the things you need to do. And then the body will do it because it wants to release it. Your body does not want to hold all that excess weight because it's not beneficial. It's not healthy. The body can't survive without you. So it wants you to survive. It wants you to thrive. So you've got to give it the things that it needs to actually do that. No, I love that, man. That's such a, that's such a good point. Cause again, most people are in this huge hurry to just go right into that, but like they don't take into account, like the, I love the old factory analogy where it's like most people's metabolisms are so fucked from doing years of trendy diets or they emotionally eat every other day, um, or their identities fucked. So every time they get uh, a little bit ahead, they sabotage it, but we got some baseline or some, some groundwork to do. Right. Most no one would ever invest in a home that has a shitty foundation, but most people are walking around with trying to lose weight without their own foundation in check. And then they wonder why their house comes crumbling down, you know? Mm. So, again, to use that analogy again, uh, I'm not sure if you're, you're religious. So I'm spiritual. Mm-hmm. But I, I love reading. Yes. Yeah, so I, I love reading uh, the Bible. I love reading um, the Quran and all that stuff. We've got more mm-hmm. back here somewhere. But again, look at the Bible, the wise man. The, the wise man who built his house on the rocks. That is your foundations. It literally talks about your habits and your routines. The wise man who builds his house on the rocks. So you've got that solid foundation. The foundation is your habits and your routines. Your habits and your routines dictate everything in your life. Because whether you know it or not, you have habits and routines right now. Chances are, if you're not getting the results that you want, your habits and routines are not aligned with it and they're pretty crappy. So what you've got is you've got the house that's built on the sand. So when life throws things at you, you may be able to, to sort of joke your way there for a little bit, when life throws things at you, which it does because life just likes to throw curveballs. So when the wind, winds come and the rains come, your house is going to crumble because you don't have those solid foundations. Whereas if you've got your habits and routines and they're in place and they're in line with what you want to do, truly, when life throws a curveball, your habits and foundations will hold you steady. It doesn't mean you're always going to make progress, but it stops you going backwards. It stops you reverting, which is the power of habits and routines, which again, everyone kind of knows this, but it's like they don't want to like actually do the work for it to figure it out because again it is hard and this is also i think where people are sold a lie with tiktok and instagram and all that sort of stuff they're told a lie that it's easy it's not easy it's hard and it sucks especially if you're doing the hard work properly it really fucking sucks because you've got to take a long hard look at yourself and be like fuck i've wasted 20 years of my life being this way fuck and that's a really hard pill to swallow and a lot of people that's when it gets uncomfortable and they quit but that's when you've got to push on through yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's funny. Like, uh, the foundation talk is interesting. Cause I, I'll, I like to take that even a step further. Cause I agree completely with that. Like if you, if your house is built on the sand, there's no way you're going to have a, a home that's going to stay there. That's going to stand the test of time, so to speak. But if you think about like, okay, well then how do we do that? We put in the foundational work, right. To build good habits, to build a good psychology, all this stuff. But if we think about that foundations, cause this is where people aren't willing to do the boring, the boring work. Cause it's, that's just boring as fuck, right? Like everyone wants to do the, the rapid, fast, shiny, fat, loss, right? But if you think about the foundational work, it's boring as fuck. It's monotonous. It's repetitive. And it's not, it's like brushing your teeth. It's not the highlight of your day. But if you think about the foundation on a home, it's ugly. It's mortar. It's literally concrete. It's buried. You don't even see it. It's literally like you, you chunk out this big hole in the ground. You put this ugly ass mortar into the dirt and it's like, it may take someone, let's say if it's a big house, it may take three, three, four months to put the foundation in inside the mortar. You got just metal and rebar and all these things. It's, it's not sexy. It's not exciting, but it's pivotal. If you want that house to be there, because then once you finally do it, you cover that fucking shit up with dirt and then you put the house on it, but without it, it's worthless. But I think people look at this game of transformation, internal and external, and they don't realize that it's the same way. But this thing it's because that doesn't sell. 
Do you know, if we literally we're just like, oh yeah, so all you got to do is this stuff every day. That's it. Yeah, totally. That's it. That, that, that's it. Like that's the, do these things again. Get yourself into a calorie deficit. Eat whole nutritious food, really good quality foods. Exercise, move your body in some way, shape, or whatever it looks like for you. If you don't want to set foot in a gym, that's absolutely fine. Some of my clients have lost 70, 80 pounds. They've never set foot in a gym. Don't go in a the gym then. Just go out walking. So exercise, do some walking, and just work on your habits, routines, and who you want to become. That's it. That's fat loss in a nutshell. But that's not sexy. No, oh, it's not. The latest glute workout, the latest hit workout. Oh, do these things. Like, oh, blah, blah. It's like, oh my God. Buy this amazing journal. Mate, my journal, for most of my journals are like 50p, like 50 cent notepads that I've got. Yeah. It's only now recently I bought really a really nice sexy one with a nice sexy pen. But apart from that, it's because again, I really cherish it. I don't care. Go and spend 50 cent on a notepad and pen. I don't care. It doesn't have to be sexy. You don't have to spend money on a gym membership. Just go out walking in nature. That simple. Again, you don't have to do anything crazy. And this is the thing. It's not about living like a hermit. Because let's be honest, I know, and, and I know you've done this before about um, when you lost um, the weight eating a donut every day. Yeah, yeah. Food is absolutely incredible. Yep. It's amazing. So my thing is, I've tried, I'm going to teach you. I've got a rule for my clients. The, the, the very simple, two rules. Pick and choose your battles and don't eat like a twat. That's it. <laughs> because <laughs> it's but, again, a t-shirt, it makes it's so good. Yeah, but, 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 is, but it makes everyone laugh. When I say, I literally say it to clients, because yeah. uh, again, I don't normally swear. I stopped swearing on my podcast a long time ago because I get a lot of the school kids listening now. So I try to be, yeah. but I know you start to swear, so you're bringing out the best of me now. But hey. when I'm with clients, <laughs> so I'm talking to my clients, I'm, I'm being nice and professional and they're like, oh, I've got this event at the weekend. I'm like, okay, cool. So pick and choose your battles. Is this a battle worth engaging in? Because every weekend you've got your brothers, sisters, goldfishes, dogs, second birthday. There's always something, always a reason to get drunk and eat this food. But I'm like, is it a battle worth engaging in? Right. Like your birthday, yes partner's birthday yes christmas big holidays go to town that is your time you want to enjoy life but don't eat like a twat because you're going to feel like shit and again it's one of the things where food's not going anywhere and this is one of the biggest things i say to clients when you're meeting friends let's say again one of my favorite holidays when i lived in america was thanksgiving absolutely incredible so but people make food the star of the show food is never the star of the show even if you're going to a five-star restaurant food is not the star of the show is the people that you're going with. Thanksgiving is about spending time with the people that you love. Christmas, your birthday is about spending time and celebrating the years you've been alive. It's not about the food. Stop making food the star of the show because as soon as you put it on a pedestal, you get excited by it. You want more of it. When you just realize it is what it is. Again, when you meet millionaires for the first time, I'm sure if you've met through the Arte, you've met loads of them. Oh, yeah. I've only just started meet, meet, meeting a few of them in person. Like You're just a normal person. But we put them on a pedestal, and then what do we do? We start acting like a knobhead around them. We start like melting, like, like, oh, my God, oh, my God. You start getting sweaty. It's like when you realize, no, they're not on a pedestal. They're normal. You act like yourself. When you stop putting food on a pedestal, you start to act normally around it. You don't get super excited. You're like, oh, wow, that don't look incredible. Do you know what? I'm going to have some of that. Again, from a place of conscious awareness. I'm going to have this because I want to have it. And if my clients want to have a quadruple cheeseburger with all the trimmings <laughs> and they've made the decision to go and do it, that is their life. But it's their life. Who am I to say, no, don't do that? It's your life. But understand, are you doing it from a place of, I really want this. It looks incredible. It's this amazing burger restaurant that's here for, for in, in, in my city for, for one day only. Cool, knock yourself out. But if you're just doing it because you're like a mindless, hungry zombie that's never satisfied, you're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel crappy because you know that you've not done it from a place of awareness. Does that make sense with it? Oh, I love that, dude. Fuck, man. That's that's so good. That's so good. Dude, I could, I'm, I could literally talk with you about this shit for hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is so good. But, 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 but this, this is why I get on with so well. Like, I've literally, yeah. the second time I've spoke to you, but I'm like, and we've literally, re- we've literally not spoke recently since did the podcast. Yeah. But it's we are two people that have never met but we were aligned on the same mission. We literally, technically, are competition, but we're not competition because, again, winners don't compete, they create. So it's not about competing. It's about we're doing this to create something amazing to help people with their goals, which is fundamentally what we both want to do. So it's not about this competition. It's about there's enough to go around. It's just two guys on the same mission, on the same path that have gone through their own stuff. That's it. So then you create something beautiful when you put them together. Yeah, man, I love that, dude. Dude, this has been so good. We got to k- catch up more outside the podcast. Absolutely. Like, I, I would 100%. love that. Um, where can people find you? Um, that, 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 you know, they listen to this and they're like, man, I, I want to get to know this guy more and see his content because you have your podcast and all of that. So where can people find you? 
So my podcast is the Prime Life Project podcast. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and YouTube. And if people want to find out more about me personally, it's Daniel underscore James underscore coaching on Instagram. And again, anyone drop me a message. Um, again, I, it's me that's on my Instagram. Just sometimes you get people that it's not really them. It is me on there. If you want to interact with me, then that's where you do it. I love that. I love that. I'll have all that in the show notes. But man, this has been so good. Thank you again for coming on. This has been been amazing. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And we are back. Thank you so much for making it to the end of today's episode. I really hope you got a lot of value out of Dan and my conversation. I know if you were you were in it, you were getting a lot of gold nuggets. Dan is a wealth of knowledge. So if you haven't already, be sure and check, check him out. I'll put his links below in the description. And be sure and go just follow him, shoot him a message, say what's up, tell him that you heard him on the podcast and how much value you got from that. But otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, before you go, I do have a lot of goodies for you in the description of the episode. Episode. Um, out the gate, number one, I have my fat loss master plan. It's my, I'm sorry, not my master plan. It's my call, my fat loss checklist. So uh, I, if you're newer here and you're just like not quite sure where to get started with this whole weight loss game and you're not quite sure like how to get started, what's what, what's to, to believe, you feel overwhelmed, all of that kind of stuff, go check that out. It's my free, it's my free five day course. It goes through your email. It'll simplify everything for you A to Z. It's called the fat loss checklist for a reason because it's just like, get this, get this, get this and get this. So go through that. That's down there as well. Um, be sure and check out my other smaller socials. If you aren't following uh, me over there, like my TikTok, my Instagram, my YouTube, the whole nine yards. I also have a link to my fat loss simplified Facebook community because we all need a home base. And especially if you are not coaching or you don't have like someone like myself or my team in your corner, you need a spot you can go to, to get help, to get support, to get loved on, to get questions, or I'm sorry, to get your questions answered. So that's what we do inside the Fat Loss Simplified training. If you like content like this, you'll love the trainings I put in there totally for free. People join that group and have their lives never the same. And then finally, the last thing I have down in there for you is um, a special coaching opportunity. I talk about it a lot right now because the podcast is one of my biggest focuses because my podcast listeners, you, you have a very special place in my heart because it takes a very special kind of person to listen to literally me and me or me and someone else rant and, rant and talking to a mic for 45, 55, 60 minutes. Um, it it kind of, I think I may have mentioned this a couple of times. It reminds me in like search and rescue, whereas like if a helicopter only has like 10 spots on the plane or on the, on the helicopter, but there's 20 people in the water on like a ship that's wrecked. The people they save is the people that's swimming towards the helicopter that are trying to get help. And you are that to me. I see, you know, if you're sitting here listening to this, this far into the episode, um, you're trying to get help. You're trying to change your life. And I want to support that. And I want to um, really help you. So what I have for you below is when it comes to coaching, as in like locking arms with me and my team, we are very picky and choosy who we work with. We do not let anyone with a credit card into coaching. Like there's an interview process. We have to make sure that we're a good fit. We have to make sure that we can actually help and solve your problems. And the biggest thing is that like, you're actually ready for this. A lot of people aren't ready for the way that we coach people. So, but it's how we get people who come into the program to 180 their entire lives on the other side of it is we let the right people in. So with that being said, I do have a special coaching offer for you. Anyone from the podcast that you use the link below to schedule your application call, I basically am going to give you about $4,000 worth of stuff um, that goes into coaching. So like in addition to what goes into coaching, like this stuff, a lot people pay a lot of money for, and I'm going to give these like $4,000 worth of freebies to you, these, at these things that at no cost, um, just for signing up to go into coaching from the podcast. But there's a special link that tells me you're from the podcast. So I know like, Hey, let's give this person this stuff. So, but you still have to apply for coaching. You can't just sign up straight from here. You have to apply. We have to get to know you. We have to make sure this is going to work and is a good fit. So you can do that at the link in the description. Otherwise I appreciate the fuck out of you. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I love you. I will talk to you next time.